Hi guys, my name is Bart Kamsky and in this tutorial I'm going to show you the simple and nice mechanics made with first person template. With mouse scroll you choose the color of the thing on the widget and then if you shoot this color you choose, the ball has this color and then ball hits an object in the level and this level also have this color. And this mechanics we split it in three different parts. The first part is selecting a color with a mouse wheel. The second part is displaying the color on the widget. And the last part is uh, propagating this color in the level uh, on the ball and on the object that balls hits. Okay guys, let's get right into it. Okay, so we're doing it in first person template. We don't need any extra uh, assets. So first thing what we're going to do is we're going to disable the sound because I don't want to annoy you. So let's go to the first person character. You can select it here and just go edit first person character. It will move you to the character blueprint and here where is input action fire. At the very end of it is play sound and location. If you press alt and disable and press this you will uh, disrupt the connection to play sound on the location and then when you shoot you don't hear sound anymore. Okay, so first let's make uh, mechanics for selecting your color with the mouse wheel. So again, let's do it in first person character. At the very top we can uh, press right mouse button and type mouse wheel and here we go, and we need mouse wheel event, mouse wheel axis. This will give us event and we can print it so you know what is going on here. Let's connect it here and now we can see what is going on. So now it's zero, but if I move my wheel, if I move it backward, it goes to minus one. If I move it forward, it goes to plus one. So now we need to store this value. Uh, the best thing is to create a variable, integer variable. So I already have integer variable. If your variable is not integer, you need to change it here to integer. And obviously we need to name it and let's call it color index. Okay, let's compile. We see default is zero. So what we need to do here is we need to get this color index. I press Ctrl to get it and I press Alt to set it or you can just use this and get and set. Remember Ctrl is for get, Alt is for set. And we gonna add this value that comes from this event. But this is float. If we connect it to integer, it truncated to integer, since it's only zero or one or minus one, we don't need the float, it could be integer. Uh, so we're gonna use integer from now on. So color index is zero, we get this value and when nothing happens, when we don't move uh, mouse wheel, it is zero. So if we add zero to color index, it's still zero. But if if we move it upwards, it, it uh, the axis value is one, so then we add uh, one to the color index and then we set the color index and if the value is minus one we add minus one to color index so we subtract one so when it's two it goes one and now we can see what is going on by printing print string let's connect it here and let's see so it's zero when I move up it's one two if I move it very fast, it goes up and down. Great. That's the first thing uh, we need to do. And the second thing is uh, let's create an array, which is the group of variables with colors. So let's create new variable and let's name it colors. But it's, uh, it's, it, it has to be color array. So let's type color here and let's select color we can compile, but this is only single color. We need an array, so we need to change it to an array. Here we go, let's compile. And now we can add as much colors as we want. I make only three. You need to remember to alpha is by default zero. Let's select it to one. Um, let's say blue. 
again alpha needs to be one and yellow okay so you have pink blue and yellow you need you can add as much colors as you as you want so now we need to take the, this array with uh, those three um, elements and we need to if we're moving the mouse wheel we need to go through all those elements of an array but this array has only three elements 0 1 and 2 so we need to get this element but if we do it now it go, it will this value color index can go up then can go bigger than the val, than the uh, length of this array so it will return as error we don't want that so what we can do is we can clamp this value that's the simplest thing my uh, minimal value will be zero so it not go down uh, below zero but the maximum value we can get from this we can type it two but if we add another color we need to change this um, this number to three or four or so on so if we don't want to do it let's just get the last index and last index of this value is two so we know that this color index cannot, ex cannot exceed the uh, last index of our color and now how we can uh, how we can uh, check this we can still print the color index or we can print whatever we want like a lot of cues and we can get the color from it so we have uh, three colors and let's check if it works yeah it works we can even print as we did the index so we know everything is fine zero is pink one is blue two is yellow i cannot exceed that more than two and i can go the can't go down below zero that's cool but what if we want to do it so if we go below zero it goes back to two and if we go beyond two it goes back to zero so it so it goes around that's pretty pretty neat uh, in that case we we don't use clamp we just use if this is smaller than zero or if it is bigger than uh, last index what happens then let's use select and if this is smaller than zero something's happened if it's not we need a um, proper index so uh, this goes here and this goes here and if again if uh, this is not true so this uh, index current index isn't bigger than the last index then it's okay we can uh, connect the the index but if it's not it has to be zero so if we go beyond two it go back it goes back to zero if it goes below zero it goes back to two let's check if that works no it doesn't why i don't know and a lot of errors uh i i blew something up here okay i know what i did wrong uh it has to be like this and here has to be this let me check if this works yep it goes round and other yes zero two it goes both ways going through whole whole thing let me show you once again so this checks if this is below zero if it is below zero it selects the last index which is the in our case index two so if it goes below zero it goes two if it's not below zero it's uh it goes here and this one checks 
if this is bigger than the last index. When it is, it uh, gives us zero. But if it's not, it gives us just one or uh, two or zero. Okay. We have it. Uh, now let's uh, display. We can we could leave it like this, but I'm going to show you how to display this color on the widget. It's really simple. Let's just create a widget user interface. Uh, press right mouse right mouse button here. User interface widget blueprint, and let's just name it color WBP, which is widget blueprint. Let's open it. And let's just select image from here and just put it here. You can put it whenever you want. Uh, this anchor, you can change it here, for example, in the right side. It means that is, this widget is uh, oriented to the right anchor right here. So if I play it in different window, which I can change... Oh, I need to first add it to the screen, obviously. So let's do that. Let's go to the first person character and on Beg and Play. Actually, if you don't use VR game, you can disconnect everything here. So you can just uh, take the event Begin Play and create widget, type create widget. And here you can choose the widget color, you created color WBP and add it to viewport. Okay, now this widget we created is going to be added to viewport. Yes, it is. So, uh, now if we move it, it always orient to the top right corner. If we change this anchor here to left side, it's going to be in still the same place, but if we change it, it orients to the left corner. So if it don't move left corner, this will uh, could be beyond the screen. So let's move it to the left side if the anchor point is on the left side. Okay, so now uh, we need to um, color this. Uh, we need to color this image. So let's go back to our first person character. And since we, uh, since we are getting the proper color from our array, we need to set it to a uh, variable. So let's create another variable. Let's name it current color, and it's going to be single variable. Yep. And just single variable, so color, but single one. And let's just set it, remember, with Alt. We can grab it with Alt and just select it here. We don't need print string anymore. Here we go. So now we pick our color from our, from our array of colors and we set our single color with the proper color we pick. And now we can go back to color widget blueprint. And here it is very simple. Here is the brush. We can bind uh, right here in the right side when there is a brush. Here is the here is the color of it. We can bind it and let's create binding. Here we go. And now we need to cast to our first person character since this current color variable is in first person character. So let's go here and get player character. Since there is only one player character, we can get this player character and we can check if the player character is our first person character using casting. So, cast to first person character. And we can connect it here. And if cast is OK, it says, OK, the player character is first person character. And then we have access to all the variables of this first person character, all the components of it, and we need current color from it. So from here we can get current color. If we connect it here, we cannot connect it here. Why? Yes, because we did something... Uh, this, is, this is brush, yeah, and it's not uh, supposed to be brush. It's supposed to be color and opacity. 
my mistake, sorry guys, so we can get what we did here, just copy it and put it here. Brush is something different than the color, sorry about that. But yeah, you already have it. This type of color is a bit different, this is color structure, this is linear color, this is uh, just color but we can connect it here, it will translate this and to be perfectly cool here, let's just remove binding and let's just delete this yeah so color and opacity, you need to create binding and you need to add this cast to first person character, get its current color and add it here and let's check if that works yeah, it does. Great. So now the last part. Uh, so we need to get this color from our first person character and put it to the ball. So the ball will, will be the same color. And then the ball has to also give this color to our um, object on the scene so, so it can color it. So let's create a um, material. So let's press right mouse button right here and we choose material and let's just name it color. Everything is color in this example. Yep. And let's open it. And we need just, we need one thing here. Let's press free and left mouse button. This will create color you need to pre press and hold free and press left mouse button by the way this is the shortcut to enter everything uh, if you press one and hold one and press like mo uh, left mouse button you have zero if you press t you have texture sample if you press u you have textures coordinate and so on you need to hold uh, a key and then press left mouse button. But we only need uh, this one, which you can also create like this free vector, free constant vector. That's the same thing, but the shortcut is free, hold it and left mouse button. Okay, and now we need to create parameters so we can have access to this color from, um, from first person character or any other blueprint, any other part of the game. So let's convert it to parameter and let's name this parameter, as you can guess, color. Okay, and let's connect it here. That's all, all we need to do here. Let's apply and let's save. And now what we have to do is go back to the first person character and find the place where we're shooting a ball. And the place is right here we spawn first person projectile and it is here. So this first person projectile has to have our material that we created in which we can uh, change the color. So if we press this um, magnifying glass here, it will moves us to the location uh, in the content browser of the projectile. So let's open it. And here we uh, need to have begin play because we are creating this ball and at begin play we need to create create dynamic material instance in which we can set up the proper color so let's press right mouse button and begin play and here we can mm, we need to get our sphere which is our uh, mesh for the ball because we need to set up the, the material on this mesh and here let's drag it from here I drag this sphere right right that so we create let's type dynamic create dynamic material instance yep that's all we need not all but that's that's what we need now and here we need to choose source material which is our material our color material we created so let's go back to content this is our color material and let's put it here okay now our ball will be black right yes it is black because our material is black but we are not going to change here 
we are going to change it uh, dynamically. That's why we need a dynamic material instance. So let's drag from return value and let's type parameter and we need set vector parameter value. So actually we can set vector parameter value, this first one, not info but value. Here we go. And in parameter name we need to type the same thing we had here, so color, because we are changing this color parameter. Color, yes. And now if we change it to whatever we want, the ball will have this color. Yes. It is similar to our color, but it doesn't work yet. We need to create our color variable here and let's call it ball color and obviously it has to be color so let's compile and save and what we have to do in our first person character where we are spawning our ball our projectile we need to also get this current color and give this color value to our first person projectile so in our first person projectile at the very beginning there is ball color this has to be connected here so if we change this variable according to first person variable our uh, ball will have the color uh, that is that we that we have here that we choose from our array so how to do it this variable has to be public and has to be exposed on spawn so when we create the ball it will it will be right here and at the creation of the ball we can set up this this uh, value so let's do that uh, making uh, making variable public is simple just clicking it but also it's the same thing here so if i remove it here the i here also disappears so it has to be editable and it has to be exposed on spawn and if it's only exposed on spawn but not editable, you have a warning that it has to be editable. So it has to be editable and exposed on spawn. And now if we go back to our first person character, we can see nothing yet. So what we have to do is we need to clear this class. We have errors now and we need to hook it up again and now we can see this ball color that we created here and made it editable and exposed on spawn is right here so now we can connect this to this and now let's see yep half job is done yep so now we need to do last thing. So like we set the color value from first person character to the ball, now we have to get this color value from a ball to the object on the scene. So we need to do the same thing with the object, but the object has to be a blueprint. So what we can do here is we can select all the objects we have in scene except one, and delete all, all of those so we have only one and we can take this object and add blueprint so add script to it so let's do that it will ask where um, where it should be let's put it just in the content like everything else yep we have it here it is right here it's just editor cube 8 blueprint it's not a very great name but let's let's do it let's make, make it like this so now what we have to do is at the begin play we have to create the same thing what we did here is we need to create dynamic material instance so we use the same material instance the same thing here on the ball and on the object because it creates it dynamically so we can use the same material and a lot of different dynamic instances it doesn't matter if it's on projectile or on the uh, editor cube uh, 
So we can go here and just copy this since we don't need to search it and put it here because it already has this color material or you can just type and type dynamic and somewhere here you will find it but we already have it so yeah and as a target we need to get our static mesh which is our cube obviously so this has to be connected here as our sphere in the projectile in the ball was connected here in this <clears throat> Our static mesh component uh, is connected here. And now, since the color has to be changed only when the ball hits, so we can't change it at the um, we can't change it at the begin play because at the begin play all balls have to have the same color. So we need to get this create dynamic material instance and promote it to variable. We need to set set it as variable. So let's press return value here, right here, right mouse button and promote it to variable. And let's name it material. Let's name it just material. Here we go. And then when the ball hits this material, we can, we can change its uh, parameter like this. So let's go to the ball and uh, let's find out if it hits something. Okay, so it's where when we can check it. So this is destroy actor. We can we can leave it at the very end, and this is event hit. So when ball hits something, we know what it what it is what it this ball is hitting. So. Uh, we can get other component, which is the thing that the ball is hitting, and we can check if this other component is our editor cube 8. So we can cast to it. So let's get a cast to editor cast to a ha. That's not component, it has to be actor. Sorry guys, it has to be actor. So this other, yeah. Uh, cast to editor cube eight blueprint. That's our guy. Okay, so let's connect it here. And now we can change, we can we can do it either this or we can do it in editor blueprint, but let's do it let's do it in first person projectile. So we get this material variable, that is we at the very beginning create this material instance and we set it up as material. So every time we hit, we check if what we hit is uh, this editor cube and when it, when it is editor cube eight, we can get this material and here we can set its color. So uh, as we did in projectile right here at the beginning, we just need to set vector parameter value. So we can just uh, copy this set vector parameter value from here and put it here. But instead of like here we set the parameter value on the material instance of this sphere on this projectile, this ball, but here we set this vector parameter value on the material that is on editor cube. So we set this value on this material we created on static mesh component, which is this. So let's compile everything and let's check if it works. Yep, it does work. Great. We can obviously copy it with Alt. We can change here. We can change its cone, for example. But everything will work the same way. Except the material is black at the beginning, but what, we can do, what you can do is just change this color right here, maybe to something lighter, like grayish whitish grayish 
Okay. Yep. And you can add in your array in first person. You can add a lot of different colors. Uh, maybe that's that's uh, yeah reddish one. Yeah, we have more of it. Yep. So that's all. I hope you learned something. Uh, please check my Discord channel. I also give uh, private lessons if you want to learn Unreal Engine. Just hit me up on Discord. I can I can teach you. I can record the whole lesson and I can provide it to you. So let me know. Cheers, guys. Good luck.